Um, I've lived in Enfield, North London, for all my life. So, really, growing up in North London, Enfield, I can explain to you the easiest way is it's very um, sort of traditional English in the sense that because it's so close to Essex and it's away from central London, it's kind of kept hold of a lot of its sort of English roots. There's a lot of English people there, for example, in the sense that when you come to central London, you know, there's a lot more sort of cultural mix. But, um, yeah, growing up in Enfield was really, um, for me, just a kind of traditional English growing up. I came from a, uh, like, a Christian family, but not a strict Christian family. Um, my mum and dad were divorced um, from a young age. So, really, um, growing up, I had nothing particularly special, but um, really just a traditional English background. Really, when I started reaching secondary school age, that was really when I started to experience new cultures, new experiences. And one of the uh, more common cultures that was, was in Enfield at the time was um, like a sort of Indian-Pakistani mix of um, Islam culture that obviously was quite sort of uh, common in the area as well. And um, as I sort of went through secondary school, I started building friendships and relationships with like different cultures and a lot of them were Muslim. So that's when I really started to build up a kind of connection and a sort of better understanding with Islam. But um, really growing up in Enfield, coming from an English, traditional English background, my parents are both English, my grandparents on both sides are English, and as far as I know, going back and back and back, it's all pretty much English. So really, it started off very, very... I was out with a lot of friends, usually, like drinking, unfortunately, and doing things which is quite common in this culture, in this country at the moment, unfortunately. But when I started reaching the age of around uh, 15 or 16, um, the friends which I built up through secondary school, who I've become very close with by this time, um, many of them being Muslim, that's when I really started to get a deeper understanding of the religion and what it was all about. And from early on, I was always extremely interested in Islam and Muslims in general, you know, what they did, why they did it, because there was so much passion, obviously, coming from them, even me, an outsider of the religion, I could feel the passion and see how much importance it was to them. And obviously, this would bring up certain questions as to what was the religion all about, why was there all this passion, you know, what were they doing? Obviously, I, I knew basically what they were doing, but in terms of um, behind closed doors, because for me, coming from such an English background, all I really knew in my ignorance, unfortunately, was obviously the Muslims believed in a God called Allah, the, his prophet was Muhammad, and they prayed in a mosque. Apart from this, there wasn't too much else I actually knew at the time before meeting all my um, Muslim friends, of course. And so, really this desire to find out more and what was so important about this religion to these people, to my friends, was uh, really what sort of drove me towards seeking to find out more about them. And around about this time, 15 or 16, is when I started to gain such an interest in the religion that it was leading me to move away from my past English upbringing, which had so far been basically surrounded with alcohol, going out and partying, not really caring about anything in particular, you know, just kind of an ignorance, living in ignorance is, is the best way to put it, I suppose. But because I'd always had a belief in God, even from a young age, although Christianity wasn't something I particularly took very seriously, my belief in God throughout my entire life had always been serious, but obviously not having the resources available to me to know how to worship him properly, um, you know, I didn't have much um, education about different types of religions apart from what you learnt at school and 
the sort of information they offer young people in this country about Islam in particular is very, very little. So obviously having that opportunity to learn more and to study different religions and what's best for me to worship God, I just didn't have. And at the time, I wasn't particularly so bothered. Obviously, coming from an English background, again, there's this kind of general um, belief in society where, you know, everyone just doesn't really care. It's all about sort of earning money or going out with your friends. And obviously at that age, people are more concerned with going out, partying, getting drunk, than particularly sort of going to pray, for example. But anyway, because of this belief in God and obviously all this passion I was receiving from the Muslim brothers about going and praying to God, um, you know, I'd ask my friends, do you want to come out and play football, for example? Um, but they'd say, no, sorry, I've got to go and perform Friday prayer today or no, we've got a, a conference going on at our mosque, something like that. So obviously, you know, I could see that their, um, the way that they were worshipping God and that they were putting God first just felt to me as if they were doing something which I wanted to do again. So, um, yeah, around the age of 15, 16, I started asking my friends more and more questions. Um, so tell me, what are your beliefs in this aspect? What would you do in this circumstance? Um, what do you do in the mosque? And how do you pray? Things like that. And all these questions were really starting to make my friends wonder, well, why don't you come to the mosque and watch us pray? Why don't you come and listen to this conference? Why don't you listen to this speaker we've got at the mosque and so on and so on? And eventually, after about my 16th birthday, roughly, it just sort of came into my mind that Islam was so um, something that I was so passionate about, but yet I wasn't involved. It, it started to raise the questions in my mind, like, why not? Why don't I look into possibly becoming Muslim? I liked everything they were doing, so why don't I do it as well? Um, all the ideas that I was hearing, all the beliefs, all the um, stories, everything about what they believed in, how they worshipped, everything, I found interesting, uh, inspiring, something that I really believed in myself, and I really respected people who believed in it. So eventually, uh, I got in contact with some of my friends and actually said, okay, so say, for example, I want to become Muslim, how should I go around doing it? And from the moment I said these words, all I received was smiles, hugs, handshakes, and just complete and utter welcoming at at atmosphere from not just my friends, but when I started to uh, go to mosques and started to inquire about how to revert properly and actually to become part of Islam. And when I eventually actually did, around about the age of 16, when I did finally revert and become a uh, Muslim, all I've received ever since is just this kind of welcoming, spiritual, closeness, atmosphere and attitude, which I've just found so unbelievably, um, I, I can't explain it in words, obviously, but the feeling that I get from people, complete strangers that I've never even met before, this kind of um, bond between us. Obviously, all M Muslims call each other brothers and sisters for a reason. It's just absolutely unbelievable feeling to receive this kind of welcoming from everyone. Just, you know, so all I can say really is that from the beginning, it's just been an absolute brilliant experience. And the further I get involved over the last four or five years, that I've been researching more and more, it's really sort of driven me away from my English past, which has been filled with some problems and has kind of pushed me towards like a higher level, like a spiritual future, which has brought me closer to God, which um, obviously I'm extremely pleased about and I feel much better inside myself for that. Um, but also it's sort of helped not just me, but also my family um, to kind of come away from a troubled past. Obviously, um, like I mentioned, my parents were divorced um, when I was very young, um, I think like the age of four or five. So obviously my mum, for example, who had raised three children um, on her own, uh, suffered. And obviously me and my sisters, two sisters and me, the only man in the family, um, suffered as well to a certain degree. Um, but when Islam was introduced into my life around about the age 14, 15, um, and then obviously when I eventually reverted to the age of 16, I've just been, found nothing but comfort and peace 
inside ever since. Um, and even my family, who are not um, reverts themselves, they haven't actually taken the step to become Muslim themselves. My mum especially has actually told me before how she has found um, comfort in the words that I say to her, stories I tell, um, beliefs that we have as Muslims in certain aspects, um, especially when it comes to obviously working hard and obviously what Islam has to say about people who are patient, people who work hard, people who suffer eventually come out on, come out good and all these sort of things really my mum especially who has suffered through her life has um, taken in a good way and obviously brings her comfort, you understand? So it's, it's really is, all I can say really is just an absolutely fantastic decision that I made and uh, I've had no regrets ever since. So when I was um, from a young age, um, I can't remember my exact age, but roughly sort of primary school years, um, I was always um, taken to like Sunday school. Um, I was taken to church on special occasions like Easter, for example. Um, so, so obviously I had this kind of Christian upbringing to a certain degree. It was never strict because my mum had always made the promise to obviously give us that um, opportunity to learn and talking to her about the issue she always believed that it was important for her to offer her children the sort of education and the kind of the to offer them the kind of route to if they wanted to take the sort of religious path and have God in their lives that um, she would obviously give it to us so she's always signed us up for like Sunday school at um, when we were not long after we were born, we were all christened, for example, as it's quite traditional in this country to do so. Um, and then, yeah, right up until about the age of, say, 10, 11, maybe 12, latest, we would always be taken to church and by our mum and our grandparents. Um, Sunday school was always a big part of our lives throughout our young childhood. Um, so, yeah, I could definitely say that we had a Christian upbringing. Um, but apart from these um, sort of places we used to go to receive this kind of uh, religious education, we um, never really brought um, Christianity to the home, for example. Um, we wouldn't say a prayer before or after eating, for example. Um, we would, I personally used to pray from time to time um, at home, but it was never anything that we would do as a family or particularly talk about, for example, once we had left the church or Sunday school, we would very rarely talk about God or religion or Christianity at home. So it wasn't really something which we had in our lives at home, um, so to speak. I had the, a belief in God inside me, um, which was certainly helped by having this opportunity to um, learn more about God and from a kind of Christian's perspective. It certainly helped me to believe in God from a young age, but um, it never really hit a point where it was taken particularly seriously. I took God seriously, but the religion, Christianity itself, I don't think anyone in our family took it particularly seriously. Um, there was no um, real belief, not in God, but the religion. You understand so but um, me um, in my family of four is really the one who was in a way taking uh, the belief of God more seriously in the sense that um, I was more interested to know more and obviously there was a there was a stage not long before I reverted to Islam where I would um, go to church uh, every so often um, when I had time um, and I would go on my own because I was really the only one in the family who um, was particularly interested to go um, and to kind of try to gain this connection with God. But um, never really in our whole lives has Christianity really touched us specifically um, and kind of given us what we was looking for as a family um, in terms of, and even me as an individual, I'd never really got anything from Christianity that I was looking for in terms of seeking closeness to God. But, um, and I think that's why when I reached this age, when I started meeting um, new friends, meeting Muslim brothers, 
from different countries, different cultures, but they, no matter where they were from, they all had this same belief in gods, the prophets, everything was just the same. It was, it was just, and the closeness that they had to gods and to their religion and to each other as well was really, really interesting for me and something which I really wanted to be a part of because that is what I've been missing from my religion before with Christianity, which I would wanted, but I'd never fully received or found. Um, but um, I think having that Christian um, uh, upbringing from a young age, although it wasn't something I was particularly looking for, it did certainly help on the path leading towards the correct path, Islam, because obviously it, it gave me a better understanding of God and of most of his prophets, because obviously before reverting to Islam, I did know about most of the prophets like uh, Moses, Jesus for example, big prophets in Christianity which are also big prophets in Islam. But then obviously, so having that kind of uh, education from an early age I would say helped me in my path towards the truth. Um, but I never, I would never say that Christianity ever really made me happy in, the, in giving me what I wanted which I'm receiving from Islam today. My past from my entire life, pretty much up to this day, I've never really had um, the luxury of having uh, lots of, for example, money or possessions, something like that. I've, I've come from a working class background and so having, sometimes in life I have, you know, obviously struggled for money and things like that and like I said to you before, my mum separated from my father from when I was a young age, she had three children and obviously she wasn't working herself. So in the past we have obviously struggled for um, money and things like that and living has obviously been very difficult for us at times in the past especially. Um, and obviously there has been a lot of temptations in sort of society, not just necessarily Western society where it is a big sort of issue at the moment. But just in society in general, you have this kind of um, sort of attitude where sort of chasing money or chasing a career or chasing fame, for example, which is quite big at the moment, is something which most people are kind of led to believe is the best way to sort of live your life. You know, um, getting a good position at work to get more money or um, obviously becoming famous, for example, is a really big, it's a big thing where everyone just wants to be famous and that's about it, you know, there's no sort of, um, sort of attitude where they kind of expect you to be, you know, if you sort of give your life to God, then you'll get good things back, which is obviously what in Islam it sort of teaches you, you know, to have this kind of belief in Allah to, and obviously Allah will give you a good life through worshipping him, but today's society, especially in this country, I've felt that people are more concerned obviously about, as I've said before, going out and making friends and just kind of building a life surrounded by work and going out, having fun, and having this kind of ignorance, you know, of, of God and religion. Um, and it seems that with all these um, attitudes and all these beliefs that have been pushed in to people's minds, you know, it's all about making money, it's all about paying bills, it's all about becoming famous and rich and, you know, being popular and everything like that, that people have just moved away from religion completely because they don't feel as if it's the right sort of path to take in order to achieve all these desires that people want, you know, to be rich and famous. But me, Although Christianity um, from a young age wasn't really doing it for me um, and I wasn't getting from Christianity what I wanted, um, I did obviously have the option where I could choose to um, you know, chase money or chase fame or something like that rather than chase um, religion. But um, I think the one thing that kept me from that is because obviously having an upbringing where money wasn't important and this is one um, belief that my mum always stressed to her children 
was that money is not important in life. Um, what is important in life is what you believe in and, and your family and, and this connection. I think it really helped me to, um, to understand what in life is most important and obviously to kind of take that belief that I've been taught by my mum and put it in the right place, which in my eyes was religion, rather than putting it in to say, spending my entire life working just to get money or to get promotions and not spend time with my family and things like this, which some people do, or maybe um, rather than staying at home and uh, worshiping God or being with my family in a safe environment, going out and partying with friends and doing not so good things, um, so, although the society in general, uh, especially in the modern times, sort of really teaches that an individual should do sort of selfish things, really, kind of only care about oneself and um, just kind of make sure that you're okay, getting money for yourself, getting fame for yourself, getting popularity for yourself, um, and doing well for yourself, rather than actually investing in others, being charitable, for example, which is um, something that you don't really see a lot from the society today, sort of teaching you to be charitable um, and selfless. But because of my upbringing and because of my mum especially, who's been a very um, important person in my life in terms of teaching me morals and um, keeping me uh, on the right path, I think really I was just sort of looking for something more than what society had to offer me and I've never been one to follow what other people are doing unless I believe that it's the right thing um, and I've never really been tempted by anything or anyone in, in this sort of society to to follow like uh, something which I don't believe in necessarily. I mean, I've always had a belief in God and so I've always followed that belief. And if anyone has ever sort of tried to pull me towards something which isn't what I believe in, then I've never followed that person. Yeah. So, obviously, because I come from um, a strong English background, I've had the kind of traditional, like, basically how to put it, I basically grew up in an English environment and unfortunately today the English environment is sometimes quite a negative environment, especially like a spiritually negative, negative environment because um, drinking for example in this country is considered quite a popular um, part of this society in fact, drinking itself is is something which is considered a part of the English culture. So for me to come to be brought up strong, have a strong English culture and a strong English background, obviously there were certain things from my past which obviously I was involved in and had a kind of, um, uh, I was encouraged to do so, um, which unfortunately was not so good in the whole spiritual sense. But at the time, obviously because I didn't have the education or the resources to know better about it. And obviously I didn't know anything more about it than what I'd obviously been brought up to live around, which is of course like things like partying and going out and not really believing in God was quite a sort of normal thing in this society. Christianity, you know, often states that it's losing connection with modern English society. Um, and obviously there are problems with the society at the moment in this country, which are socially, social problems. So obviously I was exposed to a lot of um, things in the English society at the moment which were negative and were not so good. Um, but what sort of kept me from these things, and I did experience these things um, from around the age of 12 onwards, up, right up to the point where I started to um, revert to Islam. I was experiencing all these sort of um, aspects from the culture. Um, most of, some of them were negative, um, some of them obviously I would keep with me till today um, because obviously you learn from these sort of um, experiences in life even till today I've taken a lot of it with me like for example how to handle situations with people outside of the home obviously if you're in a big group of people I've been to like 
parties and things like this, and things happen there, um, you know, sometimes bad things. And so obviously learning these things from being there is obviously important. And one part of Islam is to obviously learn all aspects of life, even the bad sides, so that you can understand them better to avoid them in the future. So I think that in a way it is good that I've experienced this side of life from this culture in this country because obviously it has helped me to learn from these mistakes or from these situations which has helped to make me a better person which I am today but um, obviously because this country is so full of people who are much more concerned with going out spending money on bad things um, you know it is obviously difficult for someone in my situation to have this kind of um, uh, like connection with God because obviously how can you connect with God if you're spending every day going out drinking, partying with friends and all this sort of stuff you know this is and obviously there's no one in society at the moment who's particularly there saying no this is bad you should be doing this especially in this country where we don't have these kind of um, leaders or these politicians or anyone available in society at the moment who will stand up and say no this is wrong we should you know be careful of this and that you know there's just nothing there in this society at the moment for someone like me to to have this sort of opportunity or this link to kind of move away from the typical bad things in this society at the moment but one thing which I did have which was very very lucky for me um, and I think that helped me a lot in choosing the right path which I'm on today is first of all I had a good mother who although she was a typical English mother herself she never ever had any problem with uh, us choosing uh, like a, a, a religious path some mothers today may have a problem if their child starts going to mosque regularly, starts praying, starts choosing Islam rather than going out, things like that. But my mother never had a problem with this, ever. And she always, even from a young age before I showed an interest in Islam, would always teach us good things, um, to always stand up for what we believe in and to uh, stay away from drugs and uh, bad people, for example, and things like this. And she would always show concern about our well-being and our safety. Um, the second thing I would say is that obviously my belief in God from a young age which obviously helped me to a degree because although I used to go out and I used to drink and um, you know go out and have fun with my friends and not really think about God at that time when I was away from all these bad things of life I would have thoughts about God and would be interested in taking these steps towards religion um, and the third thing was um, obviously the friends which I had gained from when I reached sort of secondary school. Um, I started building friendships with a lot of people who were um, really um, from different cultures, but they all had this same strong religious um, belief in Islam. And obviously, these were my friends who wouldn't drink alcohol. They wouldn't be inviting me out to pubs and places like this where drinking would be involved or you know bad things would be involved um, and so t having this core group of friends that um, really helped me to kind of have this um, environment where I could be with these really nice people who I enjoyed being with but they it wasn't surrounded by um, sort of bad uh, temptations or they weren't tempting me into doing bad things or saying bad things in front of me um, or leading me to believe that bad things were good. In fact, they'd be doing the exact opposite. And so having this uh, group of friends who was um, from that sort of age as well is something which is very difficult to find in this society from a young age. That's when people are really exposed to a lot of um, bad ideas, bad choices and bad environments. Um, but me, I'd always believed that um, uh, and had a fear, I guess, of really bad situations like um, taking drugs, for example, I would never been interested in. In fact, in my entire life, I've never actually smoked a cigarette. And the main reason was is because I was scared out of it from a young age by my parents. So you can tell, obviously, that my parents played a big role, again, in 
keeping me away from bad things. So I'd never had that um, mentality where I would give in to certain things. But I've always had this issue where because of the society which we had, um, I was always exposed to several bad things. But religion is something which helped me in the end because it gave me dignity and respect in myself, which I wouldn't find from the society which was full of drunks and just people that just had complete ignorance. And you, you can only carry on this life for so long before questions start coming up in your head. Is this what I want to do forever? Why am I doing this? You know, I feel bad every time I do it, so why do I keep doing it? And obviously with so many of my friends who were doing so many good things and were doing so well in life um, and having this kind of stronger belief that this life is not to be used in such a arrogant way and that there is more important things in the future coming that, and this kind of belief that God is more important than all these physical material items which people almost worship in this society these days you know they take these material goods so importantly um, that they actually become addicted to certain um, some of these material things they become addicted because they believe it's so important and that is just something which I just do not believe in at all and although from an early age I had several bad things shown to me in the end what is Im more important is that I chose the better, which was the religion itself. And I think that although I've been exposed to these bad issues, it's helped me to, to make the right decision in the end because I've had the help and support there um, to make the right decision in the end. But what is important, which I'd like to say, is that although I had people in my life, some were Muslim, some were not, who were obviously teaching me what was good and what was bad, in the end it was me who made the final decision individually to move away from the bad aspects of this society and to move on to the good. And I would say that the main reason for that was really that I felt that my belief in God was more important than a belief or my sort of hanging around in these bad societies was just not as important to me as say my belief in God. And that was just the most important thing for me. The kind of questions that I would ask my um, Muslim brothers at the time um, were really kind of what would be seen as basic questions because obviously um, I didn't have the kind of understanding which they had um, of the religion at the time. So many questions which I was asking them were kind of, I suppose, silly questions, but they were questions that were important to me at the time. Um, questions such as um, how would you pray, things like that, how many prayers a day would you pray, um, and all these sort of little questions which to them were fairly basic questions which they would have learned at a young age. So many of them found it quite funny for me to be asking. But this society really doesn't teach someone who doesn't have that kind of Muslim heritage all these kind of different aspects and all these kind of questions you know, about the religion. Um, so it was really, really interesting for me to have these resources, all these friends who were really, really heavily um, into their religion and obviously having that sort of opportunity to ask all these questions, which I'd always been interested to ask, but never really had the resources or the people around me to answer them for me. I really was interested in taking full advantage of that, as you can imagine. Um, so yeah, every sort of question, everything from um, obviously what the Prophet thinks about his life, like where did he come from, who was he, what sort of things did he teach, did he perform miracles, if so what miracles, um, and then of course what were the differences because I had a lot of like Christian views about the religion. Um, I would ask what are the differences between them, what, did, what role did Jesus play in Islam because at the time I didn't even realise that Jesus had anything to do with Islam, you know, I thought it was all to do with Allah and his prophet Muhammad. So obviously this kind of gap in education and knowledge of the subject was something I really wanted to fill. So, you know, all the time I'd be asking questions, not just about 
the religion, so to speak, like the prophets and God and praying and all this, but I'd also ask about questions about uh, the individual himself. You know, I knew, I knew that Muslims had to wash themselves and there was this like ritual of cleaning that they had to perform before every prayer and obviously um, cleanliness was something really important to Muslims. Um, and obviously I had questions about that as well, which I wanted answered. Um, questions about why they wouldn't eat certain foods was a big one, because obviously come from an English background, I just didn't have that kind of um, understanding of why they wouldn't eat certain foods. I, I didn't understand the concept of halal um, foods, for example. These were all questions which I had absolutely no understanding about at all, but um, wanted to know more about. And it was these questions which I continuously asked, which were giving me this kind of bigger understanding of the religion. And it was these kind of understandings which really, really, um, and these questions which really, really helped me to learn more about the religion. And although these questions may not have seemed important at the time, it was these questions which really, really um, sort of helped me to move on to the path of Islam because obviously asking these little questions was sort of getting me deeper and deeper involved into the, into the sort of movement, into the scene. And the more I understood about Islam, the more closer I was feeling to the religion. And the more and more questions I asked, it was like taking a step. Every question I asked was like taking a step closer towards the message. And so I, just, I was just so happy to have these friends around me who were willing to answer, who were happy to answer. And obviously, as I found out from sort of being around so many Muslims in my life and from going to mosque and praying amongst these other individuals, pretty much everyone I've ever met who's Muslim has been willing and to answer any questions I have. And, you know, people come up to me if they see me doing something wrong and they just sort of throw all this information at me on how to get it right. And it's this kind of, um, is this kind of relationship that these people have which really attracted me to the religion because obviously any questions I have answered I have all these people around me who are prepared to answer them um, and so yeah from from that early stage I really started to gather an information on the, the key differences between Christianity and Islam and it was these differences which were really sort of helping me to make my decision which was better for me and obviously having my friends there helped me to understand why these differences and to understand deeper about each religion and why they believed Islam was so good and why perhaps Christianity wasn't so good. And it didn't take me long to start realizing that Christianity wasn't the right path because obviously the more information I was gaining, the more I was understanding why Islam is, is correct, why it's true, why everyone is believing Islam why it's the fastest growing religion in the world at the moment, because it has answers to pretty much every question. There's never been a question in my life which I have asked or which I've had to be answered, which Islam has not answered for me. And this is the main reason why Islam is my choice of religion. When the day finally came where I made the decision I wanted to revert and be um, a, a proper part of the religion. Um, it was one of my cousins who is a Shia from uh, Lebanon. I uh, called him up uh, and basically asked him, okay, so if I want to become a Muslim, how about do I actually, how do I go about doing it? Because I'd learned so much about the religion so far, but this was one thing which I had absolutely no idea about. I had no idea whether what to do, if anything special had to be done. And the first thing he said to me, which I'll always remember is, okay, as long as in your heart, you're ready to be Muslim, you're Muslim, straight away. And so straight away, I was happy to hear that. And it was something which I'll always remember because I was expecting there to be some kind of really big ceremony or I had to do something special or something. And he said, no, as long as in your heart, you accept Islam as your faith, and Allah as your God, and Muhammad is his messenger, you're Muslim, 100%. But he said, if you're um, comfortable in doing it, there is a way which you can do it publicly, um, which of course, 
because I was so eager to get involved and I really wanted to shout out that I'm Muslim and really get more involved and, you know, in a way kind of prove that I was really dedicated to the religion, I decided that, yes, I'd love to go through with this um, procedure to really show that I'm a Muslim to the public and announce my new faith. Why I chose the path of the Ahl al -Bayts? Well, for the first year after I reverted, um, I wasn't quite sure what particular path I was on. I wasn't sure whether to pray like this, hands down, anything like that. I had Sunni friends and I also had Shia friends. So I was completely split in the middle as to which one I wanted to be. My Sunni friends would obviously sort of kind of pull me towards Sunni uh, and my Shia friends of course would obviously want to convince me to be Shia. But obviously because of my lack of knowledge on each particular subject, um, I just didn't know which one was the path for me. There was a period of time where possibly I could have turned Sunni simply because I was surrounded by uh, friends who were Sunni. So naturally I would um, follow their way of praying, for example, and uh, listen to their stories and teachings, uh, for example. But there was a particular family uh, in particular who I'm very close with and I have a lot to thank them for um, in terms of uh, the knowledge which they've provided me, the help they've given me in choosing the right path which I'm on today and also helping me to be uh, the person which I am today. And that is the uh, Fawaz family. Um, they're very, very close friends uh, of my family again. Uh, they're a Shia family from Middle East um, and the knowledge which they provided me and also not just the knowledge but also the attitude and the way in which they invited me towards the Ahl al-Bayt. Uh, many of my Sunni brothers, unfortunately, the, the way they would try to bring me towards their way of thinking would be to kind of highlight negative points about Shiaism. Uh, whether the Shia uh, brothers and sisters uh, would actually one thing which I'll say, my uh, cousin in Woking who actually helped me to revert, the first thing he said to me is, um, whatever you want to do, if you want to, however you want to pray, and whatever belief, whatever books you want to read is entirely up to you. He didn't mind whether I became Sunni or anything, it wouldn't affect our relationship at all, and he would actually be happy for me if I became Sunni. And this, in particular, is what made me think, well, if this is the attitude which I'm being told by the Shia brothers of mine, then perhaps Shiaism has a very good way of thinking, which I like, which is basically there's no prejudice. They don't mind how you pray. As long as you pray towards God, that is everything. So anyway, the more I started to research about the topics, about the Imams, about the followers of the Prophet, about the Prophet himself, the way he used to uh, to pray, things like this, and issues, uh, beliefs, topics, stories, everything. Eventually, I came to the realization that Shiaism and the way in which they follow the Imams after the Prophet and the Imams themselves were such inspirational people in their time, even to this day, their, uh, their sayings, their stories, and what they stood for still stands in the modern day, the way that they stood up against injustice, the way that they uh, fought for the weaker people in society at the time. It's just such a fantastic example of how human beings should be. How can I follow anyone else except the Ahlul Bayt who are by far in my entire life I've never seen a more uh, perfect example of how a family, how people should be in life, not just religiously but also in society the way that they act to people and the way that they are with everybody on this planet. So in the end it was really down to studying more about the Imams, studying more about Shias themselves and listening to the debates and discussions between Sunni and Shia which really led me to believe that Shia was the one for me because my beliefs were far more similar to Shia than to the Sunni and although we are all Muslims at the end of the day the way that I choose to follow God is the way in following Imam Ali alayhi salam.